Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a coffee talk. No, tactics talk. I just did coffee talk. Well, I sort of did coffee talk because I had to go take a deceased dog to uh, the vet. Anyway, that was quite the weekend. And now it's Tuesday. And I've got a video here or a replay from MC950. So this week we're going to dedicate to you guys, you guys, the supporters of the channel, we're going to do a lot of videos from... Content that has been sent to me via replays by you guys, some of them for review, some of them for just kind of cool battles. So this week, um, I know Monday wasn't that. I think it was one of my games. But the rest of the week then, dedicated to you guys. Thank you. Coming to you from my old computer, my, my new old computer, my same computer that was crashing. So I don't know. could crash in the middle of this. Uh, if you're seeing it, then it didn't crash or I tried again. As noted on the part of Coffee Talk that we got before I had to go become the um, hearse at that point, uh, I did update the BIOS on my card. It's an Asus card. It was pretty badly out of date. It was certainly out of date when it was put in. It was not updated when it was put in by the builder. There is no way, unless it went from version 0605 to 1402, which I suppose that's possible, but I kind of doubt it. In any event, if that fixed it, then great. We will test it on Monday, which should be yesterday by the time you see this video. I don't know where we stand with it. We'll see. The next uh, crash will then elicit the send me a graphics card uh, or I'll cry or something. I don't know. Mm. But it's Sunday today as I make this video, and I have a nice cup of coffee, and I'm done with all the shenanigans. So we're going to hang out a little bit and make some videos and talk about World of Tanks. Let's do it. MC950 clan Isok I S O K I suck I suck is is okay. Oh, I bet it's is okay. I bet it's is okay. Brigetto 65 tier 10. He's in an all tier about tier 10 battle. Now he sent me a very nice note, had a couple nice words. I do much appreciate that, MC950. We're gonna talk about this. I think this is a really good one for discussion, especially for the tier 10, tier 10 meta, tier 10 gameplay. And what I want you guys to do is chuck it down in the comments all your opinions and thoughts on this because I, I think it's going to run the gamut. MC950 is going to end up with a pretty good game. We're going to watch it and see how we get there and I'll comment as we go because this I think this brings up a lot of great questions about the meta and how it's played and how to play tier 10 and I'm still I'm still working on my own tier 10 game. So I like to learn. I like to see what everyone else is doing. Uh, we go. We head off into space. So we've got the uh, the high altitude drone following us in there, and we kind of go to the middle, looking for shots. I guess maybe trying to punish light tanks if they peek and poke. There is no artillery, so that does inform inform a little bit about how MC is going to play here. So let's just pause and have a discussion about the meta on this particular map, Himmelsmer of Ankedorf. In my opinion, the game is generally won on the east side. Generally. If you win the east side, then if everything's going fine over in the west, you push in and now you start, or you come across the middle or you push around to the back and now you get them in the pincer. If they are losing over in the west, then you can fall back and try to defend in one of the two corners. And it really is a, more or less a mirror image. It's not in terms of exact terrain, but the way it plays, it's fairly balanced, in my opinion anyway. They are planning on making some changes. There are some super test changes on this map coming up, mainly to deal with the west side over there so the heavies have a little more cover for their peek and poke and side scrape and brawly stuff. And I guess a little bit of more protection from arty-ish. So the meta, in my opinion, tends to be the east side. Now here's the question though. You're, you're in tier 10, you're in a Pajetto 65. The enemy team has a Kron and a T95. Lots of heavies, some heavy hitting TDs, which you can expect one or two to be backing them up. And it looks at least like the one of the 1103s is headed that way at this point. Do you go up to the front, up to the hills up here? The hills are alive with the sound of music. In this general area here, and peek and poke with your Progetto medium tank, which has an okay turret, not amazing, but you've got that great burst damage. Or do you, do you hang out? <clears throat> I think that's kind of important. Also, you need to take a, a look at what your team is doing. He's got a Chieftain and a Kron and a 277 and a 430U. And they're all kind of moving up that way. And initially I thought MC might go up to those hills and start taking shots. So we'll come back to that thought in a minute. But I want you to think about where you would go with the Progetto 65. I'm just going to straight up tell you I'd be up there with the object. That's just kind of how I play the game. I am not saying in this case that is absolutely the right idea right here. 
I think at a lot of tiers it is. I don't know in a pure tier 10 meta or a pure tier 10 battle anyway with the tier 10 meta. As expected, their chieftains peeking and poking. MC's chieftain is back here along with the Kron. Now he's probably noticed that, so that might be a little bit uh, about why he's not up there. In fact, his team had two Krons. One up, went up there and is losing some hit points. One thing I will say for you, MC, and we're going to see this a little bit more. Here's my some of my critiques. You don't investigate what's going on over here very much. You miss a lot of shots. I mean, if you're going to hang out here, I, I would more or less ignore the EBR. It's going to be a pain in the ass to hit him. And unless he comes deep and starts lighting you, who cares what he's doing over there? You're, you're protected from... Use these bushes and start hitting things like this. And you can look at this replay and pause it in multiple spots. I'll give you a couple more examples, but I found a whole bunch of them in the first one. And it's about right here where we're starting to see this as MC bails out of that spot. But if you notice, the Chieftain and the other Kron are moving forward now. So what do you think, guys? Push up and help them? Push up and help them or fall back like MC is doing? I th Man, I think it's going to be about a 50-50 split. What I will say about falling back, in my opinion, if you're going to do that, make sure your turret's pointed that way and you're looking for shots. Because these guys keep giving you shots. They really do. Look at this. There's shots. He's not lit, but there's some beautiful shots up into the lower plate of the Foch. <clears throat> now let's talk a little bit about why I would be up there helping them. Because it puts your gun closer, gets, gets you working on shots a little bit better. It can potentially share some of the hit points. Dangerous at tier 10 because you can lose hit points really quickly at tier 10. And if your team sits back and snipes and you're taking all the hit, then there's not a lot of sharing going on. But there's an opportunity cost to not being up there and helping them and that they're taking all the hits. And for right now, you're really not helping them with the sniping piece. And I, I just wanted to mention that because I'm gonna we're going to watch this. this is, that's his camera right there. So we're just not even paying attention. We sort of look back there. All right, let's pause again. Let's see what we got. Anything on him? No. We got anything else? Yep. STB1. Dead man. Probably dies here momentarily anyway. But you get what I'm saying. I don't think we really needed to fall all the way back there to support our team. And We got this dude. We got, we got that dude still. And I'm, I'm not going to look at it again, but there's so many more examples. And we've by the time we finally get over here and start shooting, we've missed all kinds of opportunity to help our team. So now for those of you who would sit back, you know, have a, have a think about that. You know, when you can help your team, when you can't. What is he doing that's good? He's, well, he's got all his hit points. But I really feel like you prioritize a little bit too much your hit points and staying in the game over some offensive help and capability with the team. That's, I guess that's what I'm getting at. And now we're a medium way in the back, even further back than the FV. Now, being further back doesn't necessarily matter too much as long as you are within draw distance and you're getting shots, right? So if you are going to be back, do what he's doing. Get him on the edge of the draw distance and at least make sure you can get lights or have them lit up and shoot them. I guess not get lights, uh, draw, draw the guy you're shooting at. And we're just sort of really just hanging out back here. So your team has an advantage. And I think it's a good thing for you that your team did so well over there without you really doing a whole bunch. Now we're starting to finally get some damage and, and contribute a little bit. But your team over there did a really nice job in the forest against a, a pretty good enemy team in terms of it was fairly even based on the tanks they brought, and they're just basically winning for the most part. We're pretty even though. We're, we're up some hit points as far as we can tell. We, we don't have any real good essay on what's going over up going on over there in the northwest because we don't we're not within draw distance to get the good data on the hit point counter. But it, it looks favorable to me. You're also up a tank, which is nice, and your guys over in the forest are starting to win. And so now we're going to move forward, and I kind of agree with this. So here's another break point, everyone. Whether you went up forward or you went back, what now? For me, you go over into the forest and you help these guys clean up. Some of them are beat up. You have full hit points. You got that nice auto loader, auto reloader. Get up there and start helping these guys close down the last few dudes that are that are holding. And it's a pain because you're you know you're talking a chieftain. And those things are brutal. 
we just really futz around with these light tanks a lot. So we come in here, let's see. Do we have any shots potentially? That guy's low. There's a shot right there on the Sheridan. What about this dude? Not quite. Sheridan's wandering around. Oh, no, oh, Sheridan, in fact, had, he realized he had a shot on you and took a stab. Their Progetto 65 goes down. And really, we could sort of step on the gas right here. We have the 113 and the FV caught out. Their Kron, their E100, the EBR, whatever, the Sheridan's raging around, the 110 E3. The only real scary tank left in all of that that we don't have a good idea of where he is is the grill. And there's there's even odds he's on your side or the other side. I would imagine the other one. I'm going to take a shot at the, sh at the Sheridan. There's a, the 113 hanging out. And I will say it feels like when you get spotted, you, you really bail out of it pretty quickly. All right, that guy's behind that. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Just didn't go in. That's too bad. Getting a little bit unlucky there. There we go. And then for me on that one, after I get done shooting, I didn't get lit. I chogi forward. I, I want to get up there and help shut these guys down. Well, we've only got 1,771 damage. We've kept all our hit points. That's nice. There we go. That dude's making a runner. And that makes me feel like it's time really to go get that chieftain. Unless he's managed to bail out and get away. The 113 has left him. All right, the grill is over there. Notice the 277 just died pushing in. That means the grill is over here somewhere. He's either in the trees to your left at the back edge of him, but probably, oh yeah, he just clicked on where he got killed from, as you would expect a, a grill to be sitting. So we push in here. 113 is completely gone. It looks like your 430U and your Chieftain are done pushing over here. And, th and this was a little curious to me. So all the guys that were up here fighting while you hung out in the back are now bailing out and all you've got is you and a Kron. And maybe you just noticed that right there because we're going to start backing out of this thing. And head off this away. Alright, so... For me, what I would have done, not saying it was the exact right thing, but I'd have been up here earlier and I'd have started working along this lower area. You know that grill's probably sitting right here in those bushes. So come around here, maybe bait a shot, maybe get a couple buddies, but go up and over and push in there. Yeah, if you eat a 750, that sucks. But he takes his shot, he maybe gets lit, now he's backed off that thing, and you push in there. And if you're lucky, you find the chieftain in there and the rest of your guys that were there help you kill him. But now they're not going to do anything if you're not going to do anything and two of them bail out. They head up. So it looks like you're not interested in doing that with just the Kron, so we're going to come across to the middle. Now we find the Sheridan, which is nice. So I like that. You saw it. You're taking your opportunity. Come up here and get your shot. Oop. Oh, okay. Hey, there's that grill. Man, oh man, was he ready. That is pretty amazing. He hit you at about four seconds or so. Nice job, so click where he is. Everybody knows that. Ah, look at that, there's the Chieftain. Now your 430 is pushing the Chieftain and the Sheridan. There we go. Unfortunately, he's sort of out in the open right there. The Kron's working on him. All right, right now, the, the, you've got four shells. In my opinion, you push in and shut these guys down. Yeah, you're probably going to take another Grill A hit, but you've got your Chieftain, the 430, you, the Krons over there, the 4005, get in there. This is that HP sharing moment right here. Try to minimize the amount of uh, shots that the Grill might have, and that's what this kind of little raised area here is really nice for. Come up and over and get there and shut down this Chieftain, Mac. make him go away. He makes a runner. I think we maybe get a piece of him. And as soon as we get lit, we bail out. And I, I'm telling you, <clears throat> your chieftain's getting rocked. So I think he thought he was going to get some support out of you, and all of a sudden you're gone. You're like, bye bye <laughs> And down he goes. Now, I'd imagine he was a little bit irritated right there. And your four shots pushing in would have shut those down much faster. This was curious to me. You know, it, 
you were kind of supporting over there. You hung out in the back. You pushed in a little bit, did some work. We're only at 2,400 damage, and then you completely abandon that. Completely abandon that flank, and we come over here. And then this was an odd decision to me too. Although you may have counted noses better than me. Three of them are up in the on the first time I watched it. Three of them are up in the northeast, and you know you've got the Kronen E100 right here. And then you come in here against more or less. They're not full hit points, but they're high hit point heavy sitting here. One of them's an auto loader. Here's the good news for you. Your buddies push in and help. The grill makes it happen. You shred the poor E100. He's having a hard time getting any kind of gun online with you, and you shut him down and we're at 3,947. To me, that kind of gameplay was would have been much better a little bit earlier in a couple cases that we already discussed over there on the east side to help shut those guys down. But you know what? Now we're at 3,900. we got a kill, and this is more or less in the bag. So... That's why I think this one is such a good discussion replay. We've got a pretty good result towards the end. We did save our hit points and have some votes. We came in, we just collapsed a flank with the auto reloader, which is what it does really well. And now we're going to end up with a pretty good win. So everyone who's watching this, you know, go ahead and put that down in the comments, your thoughts on it. I know that this is a similar kind of gameplay that a lot of very good players would do. I, I think that a, a few of them would have been a little more aggressive in certain places and grab some more hit points a little bit earlier. And then it's that opportunity cost thing. You know, you can say, I had a good result. I had I played well. I had a good result. We won. But the question for me is, okay, that, that's very true, but what are the what ifs? What what Or what? What else could have been done? Could I have added more hit points, more damage along the way, and collapsed them faster, and maybe even got more damage? Now, the more damage is a tricky one with the auto reloaders. If you start a collapse, this is a, this was nice. I, I liked all that. It's unfortunate you didn't kill him right there, but good prioritization. Once the 123 got in the way, you just accepted the shots into him. Once they opened up, you went and tried to shut down the 4201 because it's always good to get rid of those. Unlucky you got a bounce on that, but I thought that decision was, was nice right there. So that that's the question then on the how to play at tier 10. If you were more aggressive early, would you have lost more hit points or maybe even got killed trying to push in there? A lot of this is 2020 hindsight because we, we didn't really know at the very beginning that our guys in the East were going to do a good job. Turns out they did, but I think you could see that start to happening much start to happen much earlier in the game and maybe got in there and helped them. I think that's probably the biggest one for me. But that's the trick at Tier 10. When do I make those moves? And I make them too early all the time. Probably because the timing of being too early is, is much looser at lower tiers. You can get away with bad timing a lot more than at, at lower tiers than you can at the higher tiers. So your timing has to be pretty impeccable. And I think in the case of players who, well, my timing's not great. I'd rather just try to hang out in the back a little bit more and stay alive. That becomes the kind of the priority. But it was a nice game, man. 4,983 damage, 906 assist. And we ended up with a kill right there. Throw it down there, guys. I think this is, like I said, this is a great discussion on the... There's multiple ways to play Tier 10, but really kind of the two ideas. Guido's idea of, of critical train, get to the place that matters and get going, get on with it, and a more careful considered kind of gameplay that uh, MC did right here. Let me know what you think. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you.